What's up guys, Asian here again with another build a video and today we're going over the Magicka Templar. So out of all the Magicka DPS specs in the game, Magicka Templars probably got the shorter end of the stick here in Scalebreaker. And that's mainly because of nerfs that were made to two of their key abilities. First one being their shards ability. The AoE damage from shards has been dropped down by a considerable margin. The second one is a change to Solar Barrage, which was also nerfed. The damage has gone down. And so those two key abilities are now significantly weaker than they have been. That being said, there have been some changes to other signal target dots that have kind of kind of reversed this a little bit, but generally speaking, Magic Templars are not quite as strong as they used to be. Um, mainly, again, due to the changes to shards and solo barrage. So you're losing basically that infinite in power, so your light attacks are going to be weaker. Uh, even though you are ha you do have some more single target dots to kind of make up for that, uh, it doesn't really make up for the overall loss in light attack damage as well as the loss in shards, because you still want to run shards for that burning light proc. Um, so. Magicka Templars right now, not quite as strong as they used to be, still a very decent class to play uh, because they still bring some utility, you can definitely swap out a couple of abilities here and there for Templar utility abilities, uh, but generally speaking, Magicka Necromancers and Magicka Wardens will be pulling a little bit better DPS uh, than the Magicka Templars. So like the rest of our build videos, we'll be going over gear, skills, attributes, basically everything you need to know to basically recreate this build yourself. I'll talk a little bit about some other sets that you might want to consider having on hand to kind of swap out depending on your specific fight. And then we'll talk about the rotation on a 6 million dummy, uh, 3 million dummy I should say, uh, just so you guys get an idea of what the rotation looks like. And then we'll finish things off with a 21 million dummy raid parse so you guys can get an idea of how much DPS a Magic Templar can pull compared to some other classes. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here first with our gear. So again, this is just one of potential, uh, many potential combinations here, um, and there are some limitations to this particular gear setup, and I will go over some alternative sets that you might want to pick up in place of these sets. So the first one in terms of Monster Helm sets is going to be Zons. Zons is still the strongest Monster Helm set in the game for Magic DPS, if you are able to get all the ticks happening, so basically you have to be within the 8 meter radius, in order to get the full effect of Zahn. If you are not able to be within the 8 meter radius or you do not have access to Scale Caller Peak to farm Zahn, then you do have a couple of other options uh, when it comes to Monster Helms. So going down the list here, if you don't have access to Scale Caller Peak, so you just have access to the base game, Grothar is going to be your best Monster Helm set, but it still comes to that same limitation that Zahn has in the fact that it, you must be within 8 meters in order to get the full effect of Grothar. Moving on, we have Iceheart, which I do want to mention here as a good option for progression-style guilds, mainly because of the additional damage shield that you get. 8600 damage shield is not anything to turn your nose up against, and it's really helpful uh, for progression guilds for overall survivability. The damage itself is going to be the weakest out of all of your options here, but you're really just using Iceheart for the damage shield and not really for the damage itself. Moving on from there... You have access to oh, I skipped over it. Slime Craw here, which gives you minor berserk at all times. This is useful in the situations where you cannot get very good minor berserk uptime from your healers. Well, maybe that's due to the fight itself. So, for example, uh, in Asylum, uh, it's fairly difficult to get very good uptimes on Comet Prayer, especially in progression style guilds. In which instance, Slime Craw is going to be pretty helpful. Now, Slime Craw and Ice Heart both have an added advantage in the fact that they are one of the few Monster Helm sets in the game, along with Zan with a one piece spell crit bonus. If you're playing at ranged, you basically have two potential Monster Helm options here. The first one is to run Valken Scoria, which is not a particularly strong Monster Helm set, mainly because that one piece doesn't provide any sort of damage uh, stats. It's just straight up max health. So while you do get improved survivability, you do not get any sort of additional DPS. The proc itself is not terrible, but it's also not very strong either. The other option would be to run two different Monster Helm pieces, each with one piece spell crit. So for example, one piece Ice Heart and one piece Zahn. This will give you a pretty strong boost in overall DPS, roughly around 4% or so, the very least 3.5% increase in overall damage done with two one piece spell crit bonuses. So those are your options for Monster Helm sets. Now in terms of other sets here, for our first set, we're running Mother's Sorrow in this sort of crit damage meta. 
Mother Sorrow is a very, very strong fit. Uh, Shadow Mundus is still the strongest Mundus in the game, and so we want to capitalize on that by having very high crit chance. So Mother Sorrow is an awesome set to pick up. It's a base game set, it's an overland set, it's a very old set at this point, but it's just a very powerful set. So I highly recommend you get a full set of Mother Sorrow armor, jewelry, and weapons uh, for uh, your Magicka Templar. Moving on, we have Perfected Sororia. This comes from Cloudrest, so you can have access to the Somerset expansion to pick up this set here. Uh, Sororia is very good for the stack and burn fights if you're able to maintain the stacks from the five piece. It's a very, very powerful set. That being said, it is not going to be the best set in all scenarios, but it is still going to be very potent even in more mobile fights. In this instance here, in this particular build, we do have Sororia as our front bar because we do want to try to maintain Mother Sorrow on the body piece. A little bit hesitant to put Sororia on the front bar, but it did end up being pretty decently well, at the very least on a raid dummy, so on stack and burn fights, definitely a very solid option here. You still maintain the spell damage bonus on your back bar, and I believe you still gain the bonuses. However, Sororia front bar does have its weaknesses, mainly the fact that it's not particularly great on mobile fights, and really, you'd have to be very mindful of when you are swapping to your front bar, when you swap into your back bar in order to maintain the proc itself. So if you're not able to maintain these these proc, uh, then you probably want to change to a different set instead of running Sororia. On our back bar, we're still running the Maelstrom's Inferno Staff uh, with a weapon damage enchant infused. Uh, for our front bar, it's a precise Inferno Staff with a flame damage enchant. You can also go with infused if you'd like. Precise will be stronger the higher your DPS is. So if you're only pulling like 40, 45k DPS, infused will be better. But once you start pulling close to 55 to 60k, that's when precise becomes stronger overall. Jewelry uh, is just pretty straightforward here. You can go with arcane, infused, or bloodthirsty. So I'm actually going to go ahead and switch my uh, jewelry pieces over to bloodthirsty real fast. Um, but you can go with any of those three options there. They're all very strong. Bloodthirsty is going to give you the best results. However, there are a handful of fights where instead of running Bloodthirsty, you might be better off running Arcane or Infused. The DPS difference between Infused and Arcane is actually fairly small with Infused being mathematically stronger. Um, but again, it's kind of up to you which one you want to go for. Arcane does give you a little bit more resources overall. Enchants, all bloods, all spell damage. You don't really need any sort of regen glyphs here. For armor, traits, and enchants, all max magicka enchants, and all divine. So you can go with infuse on your large pieces if you would like. The DPS difference is pretty small. It is in favor of infused, but it's kind of up to you what RNG sort of gives you in terms of armor traits themselves. Now, in place of some of these sets, you might want to run a couple of different options. So first, we're going to go ahead and talk about dungeon sets here. So there are a few dungeon sets that are pretty good options to run on a Magicka Templar. First one being Burning Spellweave. Uh, we do have a couple of additional dots that do deal flame damage, so we do have better uptime on Burning Spellweave this patch compared to elsewhere. Um, uh, so it's pretty decent. Um, so this is a pretty classic set, has been around since pretty much Homestead and perhaps even earlier than that. Uh, so. This is a good set to wear as a front bar set if you're able to get the Burning Spell Weave Inferno Staff because it is a proc set, so the proc will carry over to your back bar. It also does have a spell crit bonus, so it does play very well into the crit meta, uh, DPS meta here. Moving on from there, uh, one set that you might want to consider picking up as sort of a support set would be Zen's Redress, which comes from the new dungeon lair of Marsalok. Your light attacks uh, apply this debuff touch of Zen, and enemies with this debuff take an additional 1% more damage for each damage over time effect you've placed on them. That's a single target damage over time effect, up to 5%. Uh, so, this is really nice overall as a support set. The armor bonuses aren't particularly great, um, particularly that's two piece, which gives you Magicka regen. Um, so, this is more used if you're Magicka DPS and your raid lead kind of wants more support sets. So, Zen's Redress is a set that you might need to pick up depending on what your raid lead wants um, out of your magical DPS. Moving on from there, uh, there are a few Overland sets that are decent choices to pick up as a Magicka Templar. First one's going to be Spinner's Garments. Not particularly great, but it's still fairly useful in AoE trash pulls, uh, mainly because of the additional penetration that you get. You are not going to be guaranteed to get ma major breach or minor breach on AoE trash flights, so Spinner's kind of makes up for that by giving you a flat bonus to spell penetration. It's not going to be useful for single target boss fights, but again, really strong in trash fights. Moving on from there, 
Uh, the only other one that I would probably talk about here is going to be Crafty Elfik, which is a fairly easy, kind of really basic entry level set here with just a ton of max magicka. It is outclassed by Mother Sorrow, so I would probably just save up your money and buy Mother Sorrow rather than Crafty Elfik. But it is an option for those of you guys who are uh, on the uh, don't quite have the funds yet to purchase Mother Sorrow. Finally, there are a few light armor sets, uh, trial sets. Uh, so the first set I want to talk about is going to be Master Architect. So your main ultimate that you're going to be using as a Magicka Templar is going to be Crescent Sweep, which does cost very little ultimate compared to some other ultimates. So it costs 72 ultimate, so that does uh, fall really well in line with Master Architect, which gives out Major Slayer whenever you use an ultimate. So very nice, um, but you do have to be within melee range to use uh, Crescent Sweep, so at that point it might just be better not to run it at all because Stamina DPS might be running Lacestes for the Major Slayer, or the, you might have a Stamina Nightblade that's running something like an Incapacitating Strike with War Machine, so you might not necessarily need to run this very often, if at all, but it is a good set to hold on to here. The other set I want to talk about, I believe I already have it out, is going to be... where is it? Perfected False God's Devotion, which comes from the Sunspire Trial. This is a really nice set uh, because it gives you four full armor set bonuses plus minor slayer and reduces the cost of your magic abilities by 8%. Overall, a very strong set here. Even the non-perfect version is fairly decent because it gives you that three armor bonuses with minor slayer and the cost reduction. Really great for overall sustain. Uh, Magicka Templars in general, uh, you guys might have a little bit of difficulty sustaining, so it might be good to pick up False God's Devotion, but you don't necessarily need to pick this set up. Uh, moving on from there, I just need to really quickly put up my uh, passive abilities here. Uh, but we're going to talk about our character sheet next. So we are Dark Elf, which is one of the better races for Magicka DPS. The other race that is mathematically superior to Dark Elves are going to be the High Elves. So both the races get 258 additional spell damage, and the High Elves get 2000 max Magicka, while the Dark Elves get 1875 max Magicka. Dark Elves also get 1875 max stamina and do 58 additional weapon damage, so if you do want to potentially play as a stamina templar later on down the line, Dark Elves are a really good race because you can flip flop between magicka and stamina DPS with very little difficulty. Beyond that, you can also play as a Breton if you'd like. Bretons do not get the spell damage bonus, they do get 100 magicka regen and they get 7% cost reduction to all magicka abilities, plus they get 2000 additional max magicka. So if you also want to play as a healer, Bretons are a very solid choice because Bretons are widely regarded to be one of the better racial options for healing. Finally, if you kind of want to play a jack of all trades, you're not really sure if you want to, you know, devote your Templar to be a Magicka Templar DPS, you could also play as a Khajiits. Khajiits get very balanced stats across the board. They get both stamina, Magicka, and health. Uh, plus, they get some regen across all three stats. Um, they get 10% additional critical healing done and 10% additional critical damage done, which is not quite as strong as the additional spell damage that High Elves or Dark Elves get, uh, but it does kind of give them that nice little balance there, very similar to Dark Elves in terms of, you know, splitting their spatial balances across all different roles. So if you might want to play healer, you might want to play a tank, you might want to do DPS, you're not 100% sure yet, Khajiits kind of fit into that jack of all trades, master of none uh, mold there. In terms of attributes, we're going all of our points into Max Magicka here. Uh, depending on how well you feel with your sustain, you may be you might run Clockwork Churches Filet or or which one is Potent Brew rather than Blue Food. In which instance, you might need to shift some points into health or run a health enchant on one of your armor pieces. So those are a few options there. So you might shift some points into health if you want the survivability if you're running those foods. But other than that, you will be you typically be running Blue Food. Uh, sustain has gone decently up. Now for Magicka DPS, due to degeneration, giving 100 Magicka back whenever you do a light attack. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to run any points into health here, but if you want to survive ability, you certainly can do so. In terms of Mundus Stone, still sticking with the Shadow Mundus, still the strongest Mundus in the game. And we are using Parse Food here just to kind of give you guys a kind of more even uh, comparison point across the different races. Plus it also more accurately reflects a situation where you're getting multiple synergies out. Uh, so you're able to get some additional resources back by activating your synergies. Uh, going over our skill bars now. Starting off with our front bar, we have Blazing Spear. Even though this did get nerfed, we still want to have this on here for the Burning Light proc under the Adric Spear line. Then we have Elemental Weapon. If you don't have access to Psychic Order Line, nor to use Elemental Weapon, you can use Force Pulse instead. We have Flame Reach. 
Radiant Oppression, Vampire's Bane, and then we have Shooting Star. On our back bar, we have Degeneration, Consuming Soul Trap, Unstable Wall of Fire, Challenge Focus, and Barbed Trap. For Barbed Trap, if you aren't able to be within melee range in order to get Barbed Trap to go off, you have two options. If you do not have access to the Strategic Order Line, you can just use Lightweight Beast Trap instead. They did buff the duration, so it's 10 seconds now. So it is actually fairly feasible to run Lightweight Beast Trap now. The other option, if you have access to the Strategic Order Line, would be to run Challenge Acceleration instead. Most DPS will prefer to run Challenge Acceleration because it does have a much longer duration, uh, but there is an argument to be made for Lightweight Beast Trap because it does use your secondary resource rather than your primary resource, so it does improve your overall sustain. And then our ultimate here is going to be Crescent Sweep. Um, so you can double bar this if you would like. So for example, if you want to swap Blazing Spear out for another ability, then you can replace Shooting Star with Crescent Sweep. So that way you maintain uh, the Piercing Spear passive here under the Adric Spear line. But again, Blazing Spear is the most consistent way to get your Burning Light proc to go off, which is still a pretty nice source of DPS. Uh, there really isn't any other good way to proc Burning Light. None of these abilities are particularly good. Uh, so, for example, Aurora Dravelins, not great. Uh, same thing with Explosive Charge or Toppling Charge, uh, because both of them don't have any sort of damage over time component compared to Blazing Spear, which has a damage over time component there. So, definitely want to keep running Blazing Spear, even though it was nerfed in Scalebreaker. Moving next to our champion points, the CP cap is 810 still, so we still have 270 points to put across our different constellation types here. Starting off with our green CPs, we have 100 Arcanist and 75 into Tenacity, which gives us another 95 points. I have 31 Shadow War, 31 Tumbling, and the 33 Warlord, but you can split your, your um, green CPs up however you'd like. So for example, if you're not using as many heavy attacks to sustain your rotation, you can drop Tenacity down to 64, or uh, I believe next jump point is 56 or 49. It's kind of up to you how you want to play around with that. As for your blue CPs, this is assuming that you have all of the debuffs active. So that's Torx Infused Crusher, you have uh, Alkosh, you have Minor Breach. If you're missing any of those debuffs, or you're not anticipating very good uptime on those debuffs, you might need to shift some points into Spell Erosion to sort of make up for that loss in penetration. But I have 61 Elfborn, 64 Elemental Expert, 11 into Spell Erosion, 11 into Staff Expert, 48 into Master at Arms, and 75 into Thaumaturge. This is for the Exploiter passive. The off-balance duration has increased to 7 seconds, so it is actually now worth using Exploiter, along with the fact that we're now using a lot of single target dots as a magic DPS. So having 75 points of Thaumaturge is actually going to usually end up being stronger than evenly splitting it across uh, Master at Arms and Thaumaturge. Finally, for our red CPs, we have 81 Ironclad, 61 Thick Skin, and 64 into Hardy and Elemental Defender. This is a very balanced approach to kind of damage mitigation. If you need to specifically tail yourself for a specific trial, then you will need to adjust these CPs accordingly. So that is it for all the build information, so now let's go ahead and talk about the rotation here at our 3 million dummy parse. Uh, not parse, but uh, our 3 million dummy. Uh, generally speaking, uh, it's a lot of dots. So you're just trying to maintain all of your dots, and in between dots, you're just trying to weave your spam bolt. In this case, it would be elemental weapon, or if you don't have access to this, it'd be force pulse. Um, so you have a lot of dots to maintain here. So you have blazing spear, one, flame reach is two, vampire's bane is three, then you have basically four additional dots here. So you have seven dots, plus you have challenge focus, which is really important for your sustain. So we want to make sure to have that down. So overall, a lot of dots to maintain. Now, one of the things with Magical Templars that kind of sets them apart from other classes with Execute is the fact that Radiant Depression is a channel. So it has a, about a three second channel duration. Yeah. Um, so you're not going to be able to get any sort of light attack weaves going on there. Uh, there is an add-on for PC called How to Beam, which will tell you basically when to stop beaming. It hasn't been updated yet for Scalebreaker because uh, there have been some changes in Scalebreaker, so now we have a lot of increased dots here. But generally speaking, once you get down to a certain health threshold, you're basically going to stop using Elemental Weapon and start using Radiant Depression. The general threshold for that is about 30% health remaining. Once you drop down to about 25-20% to 20 health remaining, a lot of people just start dropping dots. Um, so you would probably drop things like Vampire's Bane, you would drop flame reach uh, so it still remains to be seen whether you want to drop the generation and soul trap because those two dots are actually fairly strong the generation is especially for the additional magic sustain um, but usually you'll definitely want to maintain blazing spear and 
unstable wall of elements until about 10% or so, in which case you would just drop all dots and just straight up use Radiant Oppression. The only dot you would maintain in this instance would be Rearming Trap or whatever you have for Minor Force because you still want to have that additional Minor Force. So, but your rotation pretty much consists of maintaining your dots. So it's just going to be a lot of dots. So it's going to be a quite a dynamic rotation here because some of these dots don't line up very well. Um, just kind, they kind of fall into more or less two different categories here depending on whether you're running Vampire's Bane or Reflective Light. Um, so you have your shortest duration dot which is going to be Unstable Wall of Fire here which lasts for 8 seconds. The other one that lasts for about 8 seconds, actually no, it doesn't last for 10, I lied. And then you have 10 second durations here with Consuming Trap. If you're running Reflective Light, that lasts for 10 seconds. Flame Reach is 10 seconds. Vampire's Bane is 14. Um, Blazing Spear is 8 seconds as well. So you kind of have different duration dots here. So it's a little bit dynamic here. It is possible to kind of make a quasi-static rotation, but you would end up overcasting dots, which is, generally speaking, a DPS loss. So with all that said and done, I think it's better for you guys to see the rotation in action on a 21 million dummy parse here. So this basically helps standardize the, the buffs that we get uh, because not all classes have access to all the buffs in the game. So this particular parse should be comparable uh, to other Magicka DPS uh, that I personally have parsed on. So it'll give you kind of an idea of where Magicka Templars stand in relation to other Magicka DPS. So let's go ahead and get started here then with our parse. In terms of what dots to prioritize if you have multiple dots that are down. Prioritize shards and blockade first. Shards for the burning light proc, blockade obviously for the maelstrom. Next is going to be degeneration and then soul trap. Both of those are very strong single target dots. Plus degeneration has the added bonus of giving back 100 magicka with every single light attack that you deal actually very useful for our sustain. Beyond that, you also want to try to maintain a rearming trap, or barb trap I should say, as it's been renamed to, for the minor force. And then everything else sort of comes in after that. Out of all of them, I'd probably say Flame Reach is probably going to be the ability with the least, lowest priority. With Shards and Block 8 having the highest priority first. Keep in mind that Shard does kind of have a little bit of a travel time behind it, if you want to call it that, as about a second and a half travel time, so you might want to cast it a little bit early if you're using a timer like uh, Action Duration Miner like I am here. That way you get the full duration going. see here that my add-on is now telling me to start using uh, my beam instead of my spamble. But 
we're still maintaining all of our dots, so we're just replacing our Spambo with Jesus Beam. Now at this point, it's basically telling me to only maintain Spear and Block 8. It's up to you whether you want to maintain Degeneration and Soul Trap or not, both of them are pretty strong dots. You also want to maintain uh, Barb Trap for the Minor Force. At this point you can see it says beam them to death, which basically means the only thing I should be doing now should be just Radiant Depression. I should not be using any dots here. And there we have it, that is the rotation here for Magicka Templar. That add-on again is how to beam, and we should be seeing an update, uh, although I haven't really talked with the add-on author at all to see whether they are going to maintain it or update it at all, because there are quite a few dots now to maintain if you want to, you know, explore the mathematics behind it. But this is the parse itself, we pulled just shy of 86k, so we can certainly round it up, but closer would be 85.9k, so a little bit stronger uh, than a Magicka Nightblade, but not by too much, maybe about uh, 1k to 2k or so. Um, but really nice overall still. Uh, Radiant Depression is a very powerful execute here. You can see that we didn't use it all too much. We basically started doing it at about 32, 33%, and it was still the second highest contributor in terms of overall DPS here with a max crit of 114.8k. So really powerful execute here. Of course, the downside is you're not going to be able to uh, use your light attack uh, because it is a challenge ability, but it's still a very powerful ability here. And you can see that a lot of our uh, top abilities are going to be uh, these dots here. So Soul Splitting Trap, Degeneration, uh, even though we dropped them um, towards the end of the parse, they still ended up beating out Unstable Wall. Blazing Spear got a very hefty nerf here, so you can see it's actually much farther down uh, than if you take a look at Magicka Templar parses from previous patches. Blazing Spear used to be kind of up here. Burning Light, however, is still a pretty potent proc here. So if you combine the DPS in total, it actually deals about 750, uh, 7500 DPS or so. So essentially, if you want to replace Blazing Spear with a dot, it would have to be something that does... Uh, some of the Burning Light proc is from Crescent Sweep, so if you take away maybe like a thousand or so DPS from Burning Light, you still need to get somewhere about five to six K DPS from a your replacement dot to kind of justify replacing Blazing Spear. No dot right now that I know of can do that. Soul Splitting Trap and the Generation come close, but we're already running them already, so that's why Blazing Spear is still in, even though it did get a nerf in Scalebreaker. So that is it for this build video. If you guys have any questions at all about the build, please feel free to down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Again, hope you guys found this video informative and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.